Would you pay to have someone damage your hair? Well, I saw my stylist and my hair nearly got damaged, girl. I'm actually very curious now. I wonder about the starting point of the hair. I had one foot in damage land and we need to talk about that as I share with you the appointment that we had recently. This appointment started the same way as always, with a consultation. I shared with her what's been going on with my hair, how I've been styling it, products that I've been using, and my goals for the appointment. And this time around, I wanted a good trim because it's been seven months since I last trimmed my hair and my last appointment was actually with her. Last time we did two different type of cuts. The back of my hair was cut bluntly while wet and the front of my hair was the usual curly cut situation where the trim your ends after it's been styled. Personally, I really like the results of having my hair cut wet because of how my ends aged. Even after seven months, I find that my hair remained pretty blunt. So I wanted my entire head of hair to be cut the same way. I'm so excited to kind of go back and look at the footage over eight months ago. And then now, seeing the change, the length, the growth. Mm -hmm. How much it's grown. So, so exciting. So I'm like, I don't care. I'm not going to grow my hair. And then when I see the good before and after like that, I'm just like, mm -hmm. wait a minute nice. now. I'm not one to use heat, even in the midst of everything that's going on right now. I'm still not inclined to blow dry my hair to get it trimmed every single time. One, because I just don't care to do that. I don't like using heat in my hair and I'm not gonna allow people to pressure me into doing so. And two, I have a pretty good handle on how I take care of my hair. So I'm not too, too worried with split ends slash damage. I'm careful, but not too worried. Plus with me cutting my hair bluntly, I figured I should be fine. All that to say, we started by clarifying my hair. And come to find out that was a big mistake, but we'll talk about that a little later in the video. At the time, my stylist did her usual assessment and felt that my hair could handle a clarifying shampoo. So clarified we did. She took her time as usual when handling my hair, which is one of the reasons I keep going back to her. She isn't one of those stylists that will rush you out of her chair. She takes her time with every single step of the process. And I truly feel like I'm getting the ultimate pampering session. After clarifying my hair, she followed up with a moisture shampoo, which is the same thing that we usually do. I love when she uses that shampoo brush on my scalp and it felt so good that I went out and got one on my own. The bristles are nice and rubbery so it feels like a good scalp massage all in one. Okay, moving on to conditioning. This time around, she used a new conditioner, the Innocence Color Radiance Conditioner, which many of you guys have actually recommended to me. When she conditioned my hair, as you can see, a lot of water was used, and she let the conditioner sit in my hair with a nice little steam treatment. Everything was going great as usual, I would say. Moving on to trimming my hair. I believe it takes a lot of skills for someone to trim natural hair in its natural states while taking shrinkage into consideration. Like I said, I wanted a blunt cut all around and that's what she did. She started in the back and did her thing with the cut. I'm very happy with how it turned out. It's a matter of a lot, just there. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. I did lose some inches in the front, at least seemingly, but my ends were a little uneven in the front and a little stringy, which I absolutely wanted gone. The trim itself took about an hour, girl. She was in there doing her thing, going section by section, combing my hair out. She's just such a patient person. Even I was over it. I was like, mm, it's fine, it's fine. Just, just let it be. <laughs> but she's so precise and she takes her time with every single step. Back to the bowl, we went to rinse out the conditioner and style my hair. The usual stylers were used, which is the Earth Tone Natural Jelly, as well as the Innocence I Create Hold. Typically when she styles my hair, this combination get nice and creamy. It gives slip, it gives hydration, but this time around, girl, her fingers were not gliding like they used to. She described it as being sticky, but I wouldn't have used that word. My hair felt squeaky clean. Like her fingers weren't gliding through my hair because of that squeaky feeling. Like it wasn't lubricated enough for her fingers to just slide through. It was a very interesting feeling. I hadn't experienced it before when it comes to my hair. So I sat in silence for a bit. Thoughts were flooding my mind. Whew, did I just pay someone to damage my natural hair after all this time? Rather than doing what we typically do and not say anything, get frustrated later on on the internet, I decided to say something. I'm actually very curious now. I wonder mm. what's, because you clarified last time. You always do. And then last time I actually came and told the product in my hair. I wonder about the starting point of the hair compared to last time. So last time it was flaky. Yeah. Because then if you had more to strip off last time, it would strip less of the hair itself. Mm. 
Okay. Right? Like if your hair is cleaner now and maybe didn't need it as much, then it would do more stripping. That's true too. And I'm glad I said something. I'm glad I did. We ended up having a great conversation about it and we were troubleshooting my hair in real time. We concluded that since my hair was washed just a few days prior, it wasn't intentional. I'll give you the little backstory. I washed my hair like I usually do and I was on the cancellation list. So when she texted me saying that she could get me in, it was a couple of days after I washed my hair. So she got me in on the short notice, I showed up and she ended up clarifying. And I think that was the reason why my hair felt stripped. My hair just didn't need to be clarified and the clarifying shampoo did its job a little too well. The thing is, we are all human, and this method is fairly new. When you think about how long our ancestors have been taking care of our hair with heavy oils and heavy butters, etc., this is new. I think we're all learning about it as we go, stylists and clients alike. What's going on right now, I don't actually think the stylists thought it would be happening. I don't think they anticipated this to be the result of overwashing and over cleansing our hair. The fact that we we're troubleshooting my hair shows that we're all learning together. We hold stylists to a higher standards because of course they are the professionals and you know they've gone to school for this stuff. But let's be honest, cosmetology school does not teach black hair. So technically we are all on an even playing field at this point. It wasn't taught in school. A lot of us learn from YouTube University. So we basically have the same knowledge when it comes to natural hair. Maybe they have more experience with different types of hair, but at the end of the day, we're all learning together. And given what happened to my hair, it got me thinking that the biggest issue with this no oil and butter situation is the fact that we are over cleansing our hair. At least some of us are. So we're over cleansing while not adding heavy oils and butters to our hair when it comes to the styling steps. So now it's affecting the integrity of our hair, causing split ends and webbing. Some people may be able to handle an all-purpose shampoo regular regularly depending on their hair types or if they produce a lot of sebum to begin with. But some of us, many of us, may not be able to handle something so strong especially when we look at the stylers and they don't have oils in them or not a lot of oils at least. A lot of them aren't very heavy. So maybe we're just taking away, maybe we're eating at the cuticle and the integrity of our hair and not replenishing fast enough. Your cleansing step is important though but the strength of your shampoo is depending on how dirty your hair is and the products that you are using and leaving in your hair. All that to say, my wash and go looked amazing for about a day and a half. My hair dried out very quickly, my hair was not happy, and I ended up having to re-moisturize my hair a few times that week, something that I've never had to do after seeing my stylist. Once I washed my hair on my own, I used a gentle shampoo, and still, my hair wasn't having it. It felt hard, it felt stripped, and I had to baby it with leave-in conditioners as well as moisturizers. This is what I mean when I say knowing your hair, knowing when something does not feel right. Even though I I had seen my stylist and she's a professional. I knew something was off the second it started feeling off. I'm a bit disappointed with this visit, mainly because the wash and go didn't last. I was worried that my hair would have been damaged for a second, but it bounced back fairly quickly after I had to baby it for about a week or two. Now, have you experienced something like this? It definitely was a learning experience for me. Being mindful of how I shampoo my hair is something that I've always been careful of, but this reinforces that fact and I don't always need a clarifier. Given how consistent I am with my routine, doing my hair once a week and really I don't even leave the house. <laughs> my hair is not that dirty. I can use an all-purpose shampoo depending on how my scalp is doing. And that's the thing. I need to be very mindful of what my scalp needs versus what my hair needs. Moisturizing shampoos, however, it's my sweet spot. Hydrating shampoos, my sweet spot. I think washing my hair once a week allows me to get by with a moisturizing shampoo or an all-purpose if need be. So this is the next day. I've had this scarf on my head all day, and to be honest, I've been sleeping and sliding on and off all day. So let's take it off officially, even though I'm not going nowhere. My hair is super flat. So what is this giving? I don't know. <laughs> but typically, what I do is just fluff it up. She comes right back. You see that? Don't have to do much to it with this little technique, which I've also learned from my stylist, so I appreciate the fact that I've tried it. Hair is still like a flexible hold. It's not very crunchy. It's gonna evolve over the week, of course. And yeah, that's it. It would look really nice, makeup done, you know, but we're not doing anything, so yeah. 
this is day two. I want to make another video to fully flesh out my thoughts, but this appointment was five hours. And a great way to get out of the house, I have to say, away from husband and baby and sippy cups and diapers, okay? I love them, but girl, sometimes mama just needs time alone. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Let me know how you enjoyed this wash and go. If you did, I can tell you I enjoyed the time alone. I enjoyed seeing my stylist, but I did not like how my hair felt after. I was worried there for a week that it wasn't going to bounce back, but you know what got me back? leave-in conditioners. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer them in an updated video. And I also don't mind showing you how I took care of my hair to get it back from almost the dead <laughs> to the living. Bye. Ooh, I feel like I have a little piece back here that's a little too long. Like, take that out right here. Take that back. Take it right out. But you know, stop messing around. Once you start cutting, you don't stop.